Good morning, friends. It's Wild Wednesday. Yay! I'm so glad you're here. Um, whether you're here live with me now or maybe you're watching later, uh, this is just a good chance for us to chat and connect and remind ourselves of one of the great, great stories. The story of all of us that we can find in the Bible. Um, but first, uh, I hope that you're having a good summer. I hope that you are enjoying being out of school. I hope that you're getting to do some new adventures, whether you're staying at home or going somewhere different. Um, I know that you're gonna have a great time and let us know what you're doing. Let us know, take pictures and send them to us. We would love to post some pictures on our children's page on the website. So let us know how your summer's going. I've seen pictures of some of you and you've grown a ton since I last saw you in person, which was probably mid-March. So uh, keep up the growing and uh, keep up the pictures and let's stay in touch, okay? All right, friends, today's story is about the time that the Israelites were being held in Egypt by a king called Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was very, very mean to them and would not let them go. He made them stay and he made them work for him. He made them make bricks even, just terrible, yucky stuff to do under the hot, hot sun. And so they really wanted to get away and God really wanted them to get away. So God sent all kinds of horrible things to Pharaoh to make him let the people go. So that's not even the story. I'm just telling you the story before today's story. So. Pharaoh finally said, okay, 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 God, I will let these people go if you stop doing these things to me. So he let the people go. And guess what happened? They were running away, going as fast as they could go because they really still did not trust Pharaoh. But they were going to the promised land. They wanted to get back to the place where God told them would be their home forever. Well, all of a sudden, Pharaoh, back in Egypt, changed his mind and he said, hmm, you know what, eh, they did a lot of good work for me. I think I need to get them back. So he sent his soldiers and his chariots to get the Israelites back. And when they saw them coming and heard them coming, they said, oh no, oh no, this was too good to be true. He's gonna get us back. They're gonna capture us. They're gonna hurt us. Oh God, but Moses was their leader. And Moses knew that God would never ever leave them. So Moses said, don't worry, go straight to the sea. And God told Moses that Moses himself will be able to part the water so that they could get across. Well, can you imagine? I don't know if they even would have believed that or not. Um, I don't know if I would believe that the oceans would open up so that I could walk across, but they trusted Moses and Moses trusted God and there they went. The waters parted and they went across the dry land and just as they could hear the chariots and the soldiers coming behind them, guess what happened? the water came back and they were safe. I love that story. Uh, it's the middle of a great big part of uh, the story of God's people, which includes us, which is in, uh, it starts in the book of Exodus. So you and your family might want to read that story today. It's in chapter four of Exodus, or you can read it from a children's Bible. That's, that's what I use a lot because um, there are lots of good pictures in there and um, it just makes it really easy to understand. So, can you imagine though, seeing the oceans part? Well, we're not gonna do miracles today, but we are gonna make water rise so that there is dry space. So, before we do it, before we do our wild thing today, two things, before you do this at home, number one, have an adult, cause you're gonna need to light a candle, all right? And you know you can't do that by yourself, right? Right, okay, get an adult. Number two, it involves one drop of food coloring and food coloring stains clothes. 
So, wear an old shirt just in case. You probably won't get any on you, but don't say I didn't warn you. So, here we go. The first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna lower my handy dandy camera so that you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I just have some water in a cup, right? Okay. I have some blue food coloring. Sometimes food coloring comes in bottles that you just drop. I have this kind that just comes like in a paste. So I just put it on the end of a toothpick and stir it up and see how it makes the water blue. I thought blue would be a good color for the ocean, but honestly, you can use any color you want to. See, so blue water. All right, now I'm gonna pour the blue water around this candle. Okay, that's probably enough. You don't need to pour a lot. This is just a regular plate and it's a candle that has a flat bottom, okay? And do you wanna hear something funny? I forgot all my pieces. So let me run back into my kitchen and get the last piece. Hold on, just look at my candle. Uh -huh. Rule number three of science, always have your supplies handy. There we go. This was what I forgot. This is just a clear vase, okay? And it needs to fit over the candle upside down. All right, so we've got our water, we've got our candle, we've got our vase, all right? Now, all we need to do is light a match. This is the part where you're gonna need some adult help or supervision at any rate, because I don't need to tell you not to play with fire. Okay, now, see the candle is burning, everything is normal. Now, we're gonna turn this upside down over the candle and watch the water. Did you see that? Did you see that? All the water got sucked up into the candle, into the glass where the candle is. Now watch what happens. The candle's still burning. The candle's still burning. Now you know fire needs oxygen, so pretty soon it's gonna have to go out because it's using up all the air, okay? How about that? Now, if we look long enough, I don't know if we have long enough for this video, but if we watch long enough, the water is gonna eventually go back to where it was, just like it did in the story. So God pulled the water back, and then when the Israelites came, the water went back to where it was. Wow. Now, the thing that made our experiment work today, the sciencey part of it is, uh, water pressure, air pressure actually. So the thing about air pressure is, for those of you who know about such things or would like to learn, the pressure inside the vase lowered when we lit the candle because the candle, the flame took up the oxygen. The air pressure on the outside was higher, so high pressure automatically goes to low pressure, so it sucked up the water. Isn't that cool? Now, I'm not saying that God used air pressure to make the waters rise. He could have, I don't know. God can do whatever God wants to do. So the thing is, we don't really need to understand how miracles work. We just didn't know that they do work. So this is just our attempt to try and help you visualize what that would have been like. I don't know if you are going to the beach anytime soon, but I'm sure you've all been at some point I'm gonna get to go next week. And when I stand on the beach and look at the ocean, just thinking about the story is incredible. Just that the vast, vast body of water there with all the waves and the different colors could just whoop, go back. 
it's mind boggling. So uh, this is something fun you can do at home. You can do it again and again. Um, again, all you need is food coloring that's colored, a candle, put it on a plate, put the food coloring on the plate. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's just see if it works the second time. I bet it will. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna light the candle. I'll hold it up so you can see it. We're gonna light the candle. And here we go. Just in time for the neighbor's yard crew to come. Yay! Yep, there goes the water. Did you see that? It's all sucked up. All right, friends. It is good to see you. Thanks for joining me this wild, wild Wednesday. I hope you get to read that story in Exodus with your family or find a children's Bible about the time the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. And I will not see you on Sunday because I'll be looking at the ocean. But Miss Erin is going, Miss Erin Rue is going to do Wild Wednesdays next week. And she loves science every bit as much, if not more than I do. So I know she's gonna come up with something fabulous and um, I'm gonna be watching. I'm gonna be watching live with you. All right, friends, have a great day. I hope you get to go home and make the sea rise a million times today. Remember, get an adult, don't play with fire. All right, love you, bye-bye.